Everybody, this is Lady G from the G List Society, and I have a very special guest with me on the phone. Um, he, I have to say, is no stranger to controversy because I have to give him props for even helping the G List with one of its biggest controversies of 2012. Um, he was featured as one of the 50 um, most influential LG, black LGBT personalities of 2012, and de deservedly so. We were right as far as your response for having our guest, Walter Hampton, on that list. And, um, you know, Walter Hampton, I mean, he's been up to a lot lately. He has a new web series where he talks about um, his beliefs and about um, society, society behaviors in the LGBT community, as well as, um, I mean, he mentioned Tyler Perry in one of his videos that caught a lot of attention, and then recently there was an incident that he, wa he would like to clear up um, that just happened over the weekend, and of course, people ran with their thoughts and their ideas on what really happened, so welcome, Mr. Hampton. How are you today? I'm doing great. Just sitting at home, relaxing, watching TV, just got to eating dinner. Um, and that's basically it, just enjoying my Monday night at home. Let's just start off with what happened recently. Um, on your Facebook page, you posted up some pictures where you were severely injured in your face, in your arm. And um, the reason why I reached out to you, because it caught my attention, I saw it in some Facebook groups. And unfortunately, people had their speculations. Um, there was even a text that poured around saying, oh, this is what happened to Walter. Um, but then what really mm -hmm. kind of bothered me a little bit is people were happy to see what happened to him. I'm like, you know, whether you like him or not, you I don't know, think that... That doesn't bother me at all. You know, I'm going to tell, tell you why. Okay. Every post that I've ever done, every video I ever do, anything I do on Facebook or YouTube, I do from my heart. When I'm dealing with certain issues within the black and gay community, the black gay community, they're tough issues. They're hard to exactly. swallow. Exactly. And a lot of people don't want to discuss this stuff at all. When I talk about AIDS and HIV, or downloading in, or sex targets and all that type of stuff, a lot of these guys get offended because they're dealing with these issues. And so they look at me as if I'm the villain because I'm truthfully right. discussing stuff that's taking place in our community. So I'm not surprised at all that people will look at an injury that took place by an accident and rejoice in it because they think they're hurting me. But they're not hurting me. Walter's fine. They're still hurting themselves. Because and still I, not I mean, I have to agree with that because I don't care if it's your worst enemy but, or, you know, you saying it's an accident, we want to, and I want to, you know, address that. But regardless of whatever happened to you, I mean, we saw scars. And I really don't think that it's such a good thing to really rejoice in somebody's terrible you know, they're situation. Rejoicing. They're rejoicing for the wrong reasons. And, um, but they're rejoicing right. because they feel like maybe now I won't know, I won't any longer discuss. Maybe I've had way, way worse injuries than what happened to me this past weekend. I've been in car accidents. I fell off buildings. I used to build them with renovate houses. It's going to take a lot to stop, stop a Mack truck like me. I ain't going nowhere. How right now, Mack truck, the Mack truck boys <laughs> in the black LGBT community. I, I'm, not, I'm not afraid. I've never been afraid to discuss what's on my mind because I know deep down, and they know deep down, the issues that I bring to the table are issues that need to be discussed. Whether you like the way I discuss it or you don't like the way I bring it to the table, I brought I brought it to the table and we discussed it. Now, exactly. Some people get and angry I mean, about you this do, stuff. 
And you do bring up some topics, like, because, I mean, I have to agree with some of the topics that you bring up because, you know, I talk about the no fats, no films, and then, you know, most of the people who talk about no fats and no films are speaking up for those who might be offended because they are of a, of a certain way or they might identify as being effeminate. How but then I'm saying, you know, there's like a... Fun. Right, and I'm why, saying that. Why, why would you get offended? I don't understand that. Right, and that's what yeah. I did in our cologne. Like, why be offended over it? And I look at it on the side of the person who who may identify with no fans, no films, because I say it's a preference, you know. But I think what people have maybe an issue with the way that Walter Hampton brings it up on Facebook or in oh, social gonna media. It to you on. I'm going. I'm going to bring it to you in a way. I'm not Martha Stewart. Exactly. Do you Stewart feel like it's justified when people say that you are saying that you hate or dislike people who are that I've way? I've never, ever said that I hated or disliked anyone on Facebook, on YouTube. Look at my videos. I don't oh, look, hate yeah. or dislike anybody. Right. I don't hate or dislike the soul. I, all my videos are about love, about issues in our community. But people take them the wrong way. They take it so in a negative light because they that, don't want to do it. So, okay, and I get that because, you know, I got a lot of slack myself for that saying, what was it, five reasons why it's okay to be team, no, was it team no fat, no films? And trust, I got a lot of slack for it. Sometimes, well, imagine. most of it was for my choice of words. And the way I chose my words was, I may say things that you're not going to agree with because I'm talking from a point of accountability. Would you say that that's how your voice is, is to make people aware and be accountable rather than being victimized, or am I missing I try the point? To come at it, I try to come at it in a politically un, uh, incorrect way because oh, the conversation okay, so, hey, you are, you are not politically correct anyway. You. Right. Well, why not? Because I'm trying to get us to, to talk and discuss this stuff. Otherwise, I, I don't know if you've ever looked around Facebook or YouTube or any of these other members of the Black Day community. Sometimes we, we paint a picture that's just too pretty. And if yes. you keep the thing as pretty, this pretty picture, and we know we it's not real, people get people who are dealing with realness think they're, they're doing something wrong because everybody else is, is, is painting this picture of being happy and everything is just so great. Life isn't like that in the, in the gay community. Life isn't like that in the straight community. Sometimes we've got to deal with real issues that are painful to deal with, and it's okay. It's all right to go ahead and discuss those issues. It's okay to go ahead and talk about sex parties and what's taking place. It's okay to talk about HIV and AIDS and how people contract it and how they pass it to other people. It's okay to discuss this stuff. I mean, we can't silently, if we sit back silently, we won't get anything accomplished. And I agree. Now, here's one question I have for you about addressing those topics because, you know, for some time I have followed your, um, you know, Facebook timeline, and I would say probably your YouTube, I've seen your YouTube videos where I say your YouTube ver videos aren't as controversial as what I've seen on, on Facebook. And, again, you know, so don't take it as judgment for me because – I'm all about speaking your mind, but um, I say sometimes maybe the line may have been crossed because um, I've seen you mention names as far as who has HIV and, you know, or someone has died. Unless, unless the person has come on my wall and told me they had HIV, I have not. People have come on my page and said they had HIV. And I might have repeated oh. that through the course of a conversation or other posts. Yeah, I don't just randomly grab a person out of the blue and say they have HIV. No, I wait for the person. That, the people, when you're referring to conversations I have with people who said they were HIV positive. They admitted they, they had said HIV, it which is on your wall? They put it, and that's a good thing. We shouldn't be hiding HIV any damn way. What's the purpose of hiding it? No, Why true, true enough. Why are the fact but... that they have HIV? But have these people who disclose to you, they disclose it to you on your public they wall rather than... On my wall, in the course of a conversation, several people admit it all the time. There are many people that come on my page and admit that they have HIV. What's the problem? Why are we hiding it anyway? This should be something no, we, just, we talk about openly. 
That's the reason why HIV is spreading so deep in our community. Too much secrecy. We don't want to talk about it. It's a bad thing, but everybody damn near got it. Give me a break. Well, I mean, I, I understand your point, Walter, but I would say, um, and just to play devil's advocate to that, I think um, it's not so much that it's such a, a taboo topic or something that we want to sweep under the rug. For, you know, some people having HIV or other insecurities may not be something they just want the whole world to know. You know, if they share it with someone, and for instance, like if it's um, like say someone you mentioned before on your on your Facebook page, maybe they're just telling you because maybe you said something that empowered them to share their story with you, but didn't want it to be used against them. Perhaps be, maybe because How you two had a different so much HIV stuff. Oh, let's, let's let's have a deeper conversation for a few minutes. Let's start okay, with cool. a deeper deeper conversation. Sure. How can someone's HIV status be used against them? Why, why are we allowing someone's HIV status to be used against them? Why well, would I allow my HIV status, if I was HIV positive, to be used against me? And in what way? In what fashion? What are we saying here? Do we got okay, to take the negativity away from HIV? Right. We got your to take away the why negativity would it be? from HIV. Well, ahead, well, I wouldn't I say it's making, yeah, I wouldn't say it's making it negative. I would say this. Uh, whatever someone's health status is, it should be private to them and let's, let them tell the world that this we is what they are. We must remove the privacy and negativity that surrounds HIV or we're never going to resolve this problem. We've got to take this privacy away because it shouldn't be a private matter anyway. So everybody no who has HIV should be, should be outed? Should they be outed or should they be able to should they be able to discuss it without um what's the words I'm looking for? Should they be able to discuss their status without any negativity? I mean, yeah, they, they, the they, they should. They should, but they should be able to, well, they're, 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 we gotta remove I don't I, I I will never see HIV as being a negative thing. You can't make me see it as being something negative. There's nothing to be hiding HIV about because I realize something. HIV right. is but I think what the issue is why well, we continue to hide it. Right. I think what the issue is, Walter, is that people feel that you out people, and they feel like that's not okay to out people who may not want the whole world to know. I mean, I've it's one thing outed, to... I've never outed anyone who was HIV positive, who didn't already come on my wall and already disclosed that they were HIV positive and told the whole world in the first place. My Facebook wall is open to everybody in their mama. Fair yeah. enough. <laughs> I've never, well, fair I've, enough. I can't I've, argue I've, that. So if you post something on my wall, everybody in their mama see it, because I don't lock, lock, lock down my face from nobody. But again, okay, so then, we so have then to, you, you and I, go ahead. So then, you, so then what you're saying is anyone who you mentioned on your uh, Facebook wall as HIV positive, are peop are all of those people have disclosed it to you? You haven't outed someone Everybody, who has said it privately. I never outed anybody. There was no one I ever outed. There was a, there was some drama about a guy who passed away, and I asked the question: What did he die from? Did he die from AIDS? That's right, all Maurice Morrell. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, my, I never said he had something. I said, "What happened here? What did he die from?" I know he died from. I remember. But see, I remember a little bit differently. You didn't flat out say he was positive, but you said that he told you in confidence about some diseases he had. And I think that I was later me. on, but not during that during that period of time. I said I knew him. Mm -hmm. I asked the question, "What did he die from?" See, this shouldn't be something that we have to run and hide from. This dying from AIDS shouldn't be something to be ashamed of, right? Absolutely not. I mean, really, we shouldn't be ashamed of okay. anything we about ourselves. To stop the foolishness in with, dealing with HIV, so many of us in the black gay community got it, but we run around like chickens with our heads cut off when you mention it. When do we stop the foolishness and start dealing with this realistically? We'll never change anything with all the seek the hide and the sneaking and making it seem like it's a bad thing to tell somebody you HIV positive, but everybody got it. It doesn't make sense to me. 
And I understand that, but, I mean, you could probably, I'm sure you'll agree with this, Walter, that it's much more than just HIV that we are, as a community, are ashamed of. You know, oh, I believe that. We got folks that are ashamed of, they're ashamed they're black and gay. They ask somebody this question, because I do it all the time. I get black mm -hmm. and gay and proud and see how they answer. Hmm. I mean, they run, they run from that. Exactly. They I run mean, from that that's... question. So then, so okay, so then let do. me just I play devil's advocate. I know work that we got to do in our community. Go ahead. Right, so let me just play devil's advocate with you because what we do at the G List is some of the things I may say may be my own personal points of view, but I always like to throw in what, you know, the chit chatter is and stuff yeah, like that. So, so yeah, it would be unfair to for people to say that, well, you know, Walter is so fixated on HIV because he has it and just not saying so, or he, he got some that security me, stuff. Me, me, go ahead. I, I, I've, I've been fighting against HIV since I moved to Atlanta at 18, 19 years of age. I've talked to people, so many people about HIV before Facebook even existed. I've been at restaurants where people got up and walked away from the table because they got tired of me talking about HIV. I'm going to talk about HIV. I don't care what people think about me having HIV. I don't have it, but guess what? I'm going to talk about it. And I did a video <laughs> that says, that's titled, I am HIV positive. I did that video on purpose. You can't shame me into being silenced about HIV. I'm going to have these conversations because I'm getting through to a lot of people. They not get through to everybody, but the few people I do get through, they listen to me and they say, Walter, I'm so glad I heard what you had to say. Nobody else is discussing this in the way that you're discussing it. Thank you for bringing this discussion up tonight because I needed to hear that because I almost made a mistake. Now I'm, I know, based upon the conversation that you, you went someplace, I needed to go in here and listen. So I don't pay people no attention when they run around and talk. They, don't, they talk about Jesus Christ and, hey, didn't you come here to say they lost? So they're going to talk about yeah. me. They're going to say negative stuff. I don't care what they say about me. I really don't care. I don't have no sense of nice worrying about what people say about Walter Hampton. I don't care. So, Anna, and um, I'm very glad to hear that because, you know, this brings into the next um, thing I wanted to talk with you about formally, um, you know, because of your points of views and um, the platform that you have and whether it's, um, you know, congratulatory um, comments or strong criticism and sometimes backlash, I said, you know what? I said, I don't care about the negative backlash that he gets. It's the fact that whatever he says garners attention. And I had to mention you. I said, well, you were the 17th most influential black LGBT person number, in America. Number 18. Uh -huh. number 18. And I swear, I mean, if I could pull all the emails and the Facebook messages saying, <laughs> oh, you just added him for shock value. I'm like, well, you know what? These 30, 40 some odd comments that I received personally that you can't even tell Walter or put publicly on the website is the reason why he's on there. Cause he got thousands of followers. He has tons of videos, tons of Facebook statuses where people comment and, you know, respond however they may. What is your face or not face to face, we're not face to face, but your feelings towards the G List community about why you were on the list? Well, I was grateful and very thankful that you had me to the list because trust me, I, I, I hadn't started out on this. I'm just being Walter. I'm, I've right. always been the type of person to speak my mind about stuff that I find dear to me. I care about these guys in the black gay community. You see, that's the difference. Uh, a lot of these guys don't understand that. I'm coming at them with love, but they ain't never had no love before, so they don't get it. They think I'm trying to tear them apart. I'm not, maybe I'm not trying to hurt nobody. I'm trying to educate you so that you can go forward and have a decent life and not have to deal with some of the issues I dealt with or my friends dealt with. We all got to work together as a team. But if you, they see what I do as negative, then I'm fine with that. I, I really don't. I realize that whenever, you know, we, we sometimes we forget that Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King, the leader of the civil rights movement, the worst people he had to deal with was the black church. They didn't want to stand by him. They thought he was a rabble rouser. They didn't want to join the civil rights movement. They didn't want to get involved with that. They just want to go with the status quo. But see, we forget that. So, so in other words, not, and so in other words, you think that we prefer to be silent and let's say die a slow death 
than to really be proactive and um, empower ourselves to take on our issues? It bothers me that I live in Atlanta, Georgia, the largest black gay city on planet Earth. There are more gay men and women in this city, black gay men and women, in any other city than with African-American blacks. So we have no political organization. We don't have any type of, we don't even own any clubs, per se, in this city. We don't have any restaurants. We don't have anything that empowers us. Because don't you got Daiquiri Factory out there? We got the Daiquiri Factory, which is a great little bar. I actually like the Daiquiri Factory, but it's a little small place, a little small bar. It's not nothing, you know, it's not, it, I love it. Don't get me wrong, because I, I, I love what she's doing over there. I go to it, but I would like to see something a little bit bigger than the Daiquiri Factory for all these black gay folks we got running around this town. We should be able to have some really nice restaurants that, and, and clubs that are fabulous. So there's a lot of money in here. So we'll go. I agree with you account. because um, you bring up a great point, which I wasn't even had no you know thought about discussing this with you. But since you brought it up, um, you know, not just even in Atlanta, we have New York and D.C. and maybe a few other hot pockets of Black LGBT presence. And you mentioned that you know even in the business world and ownership, we don't claim a lot, but. Being that you have the platform that you have on social media, um, what do you think about the lack of presence of our voice in the political sense? Because let's say Atlanta, for example, it is in a state that's very conservative. I mean, it's in the Bible Belt. But then when we have situations such as health care, for even whether you, it's for age, people with HIV or AIDS or not, but just affordable health care, um, gay marriage and other things that, or even, um, what is it, not the anti-bullying or what they call it, um, oh, God, uh, well, you know, just um, discrimination against being gay. Do you think that we could be using our voice better or, or stronger to fight these causes in these cities where we have these hot pockets well, of black LGBT people? First, the first thing we got to do is start with pride. And two, we have pride and love who we are as gay Americans, black gay Americans. How can we go forward and, and open our political organization? So many of us are ashamed that we are gay. We don't want people. Have you ever walked into a club, uh, walk into a club with a group of friends, now ducking and diving, they don't want anybody to see them walking into the club at 2 o'clock yeah. in the morning? And it's like, well, who's around here looking at y'all any damn way? It's, what's going on? Why y'all hiding? I've never understood that. But I've seen my friends do this for years. I'm like, why are y'all ducking and diving? We walking into a gay club. So uh, how how can we have a political organization in broad daylight and expect gay folks to support it if they ducking and diving at 2 in the morning and walking into a gay club and nobody can see them? It's, it's well, what, okay, pride but, and love. No, I get your point on that, but what about, like, let's say the Walter Hamptons of Atlanta, the Black Prides of hey, Atlanta. You can find uh, me a Walter, another Walter Hampton. Can you please drop him off over here tonight? If you can find another person that thinks like me, I want to meet him. Where is he? Because I'm definitely we'll, certain we'll probably see a Walter wedding of the two Walter Hamptons. <laughs> Where is he? Because I want to see him. I mean, they they out there, mm -hmm. but, you know, I don't yeah. think um, – and this is why I respect you, because regardless of whether we share similar opinions or not, is that you are unafraid to speak your voice. And, I, you know, I believe you do represent people in the community. So I'm not one of those who say, oh, just because I disagree with you, you know, you're this or you're a poison. You're not a poison. Um, so, you know, that's why – I'm glad to be interviewing you and being able to share with you, you know, the real, um, the realness of what what we're all about and why you were mentioned on our website on a couple of occasions. So